Hello everyone and a warm welcome to this web word session with me, Feline van Heerden. I am the provincial head in the Western Cape for private property. So today's session um, is all about how to maximize your private property listings. And I am going to share with you how the private property listing school works and why do we um, implement it in the first place. Right, so at private property, we strive to ensure the best possible browsing experience to our property shoppers, right? Um, I think on any online portal, it is, it's the name of the game, a great user experience. And because we know that the information contained on a listing directly impacts that experience, we award the listings with that is rich in detail and with the most amount of information, the best possible exposure on the website. So I think the most important place where for us to start, um, now that you understand why uh, it's implemented, is how do I activate and what do I need as a minimum requirement in order to get my listing onto private property? Cool, so let's talk about the minimum criteria and the first 25% out of the possible 100 and how do you get to that? So the number one is a minimum of three pictures. I always joke and say, don't ever be fooled that three pictures will ever be enough in any online space when you're selling something. So yes, but as a minimum, we require three. We'll talk about the rest in a little while. So then obviously a relevant asking price. You cannot send us a listing if you've not priced it. And oftentimes I get asked, what about if I want to go with POA? I don't want to stipulate a price. I want them to inquire. How it is allowed, we do allow for POA listings. I think it's just, it's important that, that property professionals are mindful of the fact that when a listing is marked as POA, it does go to the bottom of the search results. So when somebody comes in, all serious property shoppers come to a portal like private property and they search according to area and price. And if we can't stipulate the price, it will still fall within the bracket, but it will definitely be at the bottom of the search result. So just be, just be mindful of that. The address. The address here, we're not yet at the debate about should I show my address or not. We are talking about the minimum requirements in order for the listing to activate. So here, there are four fields that we need to be mindful of. So especially when we talk about sectional title listings. For full title, we obviously need the street address in terms of the number and the street name. That is it. But for sectional title, we are looking for the door number, the complex name, the street number, and this is this is usually where the question marks are, and the street name. So four fields in order for the address field to be seen as complete. Then when we activate vacant stand, land, um, the minimum criteria is for the size of that land to be shown. And then for a residential property, um, we do require the number of bedrooms and bathrooms as well as the home type. So what are we looking at? Is it a granny flat? Is it an apartment? Is it a house? Um, the home type is, is important to the property shopper. And now we get to the juicy stuff, the stuff that the property shoppers really like to see. And that will give you your additional 75%. I'm going to start at the smaller items and I'll work my way up. So I think if we think about it from a property buyer perspective or property, um, not necessarily a buyer, even a tenant um, perspective, we always, the size of a property is, is, is relatively important, right? Can it accommodate what I would like for it to accommodate? So the detailed property information that relates to the floor and the land area will afford you an additional 5%. So obviously on a sectional property, um, land size is, is not relevant. So it's either or the information that you've given us will result in your five, additional 5%. Then something that really impacts um, 
and where it really matters on the finan financial level is the additional price detail um, that relates to a property in terms of levies and rates. So we all know that, um, yeah, levies has become a hot topic and it definitely is a consideration for a property shopper and something that they need to be very aware of when they make a decision whether they can afford a property or not. So we do have bond calculators available on the website so they can work out their, you know, their monthly repayment amount. But something like levies and rates is something that they need to take into account. Therefore, crucial to a listing for them to make a completely informed decision. So addition another 5%, either or, in some cases like full title, we know levies, well, sometimes not applicable, sometimes very well applicable. Um, so yes, either or, 5%. And now we get to the debate about the property address. So that old saying about location, location, location still stands and it will probably stand the test of time. The location and the exact pin on the map of a property will probably always be one of the most important parts of any property listing. Now, having been at private property for a significant amount of time, I have heard every debate about why property professionals choose not to show the address on a property listing. And even though there's merit in, in all of those, um, I, it's not really an argument, it's, it's an opinion, right? Um, it is something that is hugely important to the property seeker. And we have allocated a 20% to whether the address has been displayed or not. So 10% gets given when the address is revealed. So when the property shopper can see the address, 10% is allocated. And then an additional 10% is allocated when that property's location has been pinned on the map that is available for them to view. I'm just thinking people that are relocating, they would like to know, or they probably already have done their research in terms of schools for their children. Or how far from the, my new workplace am I going to be? So location and the exact location is very relevant to a property shopper. And then we get to the remaining 45% that gets allocated to the use of media on a listing. And this takes me back to way back. Um, I come from a very small town. And Sundays, we would get in the car and we would go window shopping, right? Because people buy with their eyes. And you would very slowly walk your way. Or sometimes we'd even park the car and walk, um, looking at all the available items in the windows. Because, yeah, you could make a decision based on what was available, um, take your time and come back during the week for the whichever item you wanted. Um, I think it is important to realize that the media on a property is probably the make or break um, of whether you will get the inquiry or not. So hugely important in how that property listing is presented to the property shoppers. So therefore, we have allocated 15% to the image gallery. So the moment you've given us 12 unique, good quality, high resolution photos, we will afford you the 15%. We obviously accommodate up to 40 images in the gallery. And if there's always a discussion in terms of where on the spectrum does your property lie. So for small properties, it sometimes is a struggle to get to 12 photos. And then we sometimes say, okay, so if it's a complex or it's an apartment inside of a complex, maybe take photos of the surrounding area, the communal pool or the braai area or the front gate. Um, so try and focus on the points that you would use as selling points when talking to prospective buyers. Um, on that note, 
it is important to stay true and authentic to the property listing that you have. So when it comes to photos, sometimes these representations are heavily edited um, and you can just gauge when the property shopper gets out the car and goes, hmm, not quite what I saw online. Um, so yeah, try to stick to what you are selling um, and not have the property shopper or the, the tenant or whoever it is that you are engaging with, um, you know, yeah, be completely um, surprised by by the property when they when they get out because it does impact on on the trust relationship. So, and then the last thirty percent goes towards media in the form of video or uh, the lovely product on our website um, called uh, Matterport. So. On the video side, obviously, um, we would we love it when the video communicates the flow of the property. So you would enter at the front door and we would give you a very good idea of what the property looks like and um, yeah, just communicate what sits where. Um, having been through a property journey um, personally, it is highly valuable for somebody to sort of gauge, okay, so this is where this is in the property and that's where this is. So yeah, video gives that additional added experience um, to a property search journey. But then more so when you add Matterport to a listing, it is just a phenomenal tool. It is a 3D walkabout through the property where you can make your way from one room to the next um, and simulate what what the property experience is like. So hugely beneficial for someone that likes to or would like to, um, you know, um, market that property further than just the local market. You can send it, well, <laughs> as far and wide as you'd like, and it's probably the closest that somebody will come to walking through that property um, apart from just being there in the physical form. Um, so definitely, I mean, it's as good as an open house, really. So it offers that, affords that person to, to ha really have an in-depth look as to what that property uh, is, you know, presenting. So... The one thing that I also want to mention about the use of media on property listings is that property professionals often find that when additional media is added on listings, that the lead generation sometimes um, go down. And the reason for that, or it's less than something that does not have media on it, and the reason for that really is because people can have a really good look at a property. So even though the lead count may be less, the quality of the leads that get generated on a listing where media is presented is just so much higher. The quality of that lead and the quality of the conversation that you have with a prospective buyer or tenant is just of such a high quality and standard that um, you know no time wasters and they've seen what they what they wanted to see and they have contacted the property professional for a reason that they've decided for themselves already so from a from a and we're all busy right um and petrols become very expensive so for that reason it is sometimes a very good idea to add the media um, and yes, obviously, it also makes for a fantastic negotiation, well, part of your toolkit when you negotiate for that sole mandate. So that brings us to the full 100% that is available on a property listing and how it gets applied. The quality score is available on every property that is listed on private property. So if you go onto the property listing and you go to the very bottom of the page, you will see that it states at the bottom of the page, quality score. You can click into it and you can see what is available and how it has been afforded to that particular listing. To a property shopper, it does not mean anything. They have already had the experience, they've engaged with the information that was offered to them and they found it either useful or not. 
So the, the, the use of the quality score really is for our property professionals to see how best they can enhance their property listings. Something outside of our quality score that is worth mentioning is the description of a property. Also hugely important. Um, not too long, not too small, not too short. Um, and always keep in mind that keywords from a search perspective does play an important role. So choose the amenities because you're going to list them anyway um, in form of you know what is available. But choose your words wisely. Um, once again, authenticity and stick to um, words that people understand. Because <laughs> oftentimes we find um, this very elaborate descriptions that sells a property and it's almost become the generic way of selling property. So yeah, stick to stick to the to, to the authentic points of, of this property listing that you are, are presenting. And then in closing, I'd like to say that um, from a property, private property um, client service perspective, every client on private property is allocated a relationship manager. And we love training our customers and having these kinds of conversations about how can we ensure that your private property journey is absolutely maximized and how do you get the best exposure on our portal? Um, after all, we've got the same client base. The property shopper out there is, is king um, and they need to be satisfied with the product that gets delivered to them. So if you are unsure, um, please reach out to your, to your relationship manager. They have access to the quality score audits, like we call them. Um, the information is also available in Insights. Um, and every office should have access to our inside software where you can on a listing level go and see what the current score of all of your property listings are. That additional document that you request from your relationship manager will tell you what is missing. So it will tell you, yes, you've got rates allocated and yes, but maybe you've got two photos missing or maybe it is you know, the property has been sitting on the market for a while. Maybe it's time to do an HD video or add Matterport and, you know, widen the marketing effort that you currently have. And then, um, so yeah, please reach out. Um, the relationship managers love to come out and train, um, if not just the admin staff, the agents, um, every office setup differs. Um, but yes, we are available, more than happy to train and give you the additional information needed to ensure that your property, um, private property experience is, is the best. Great. So how does the saying go? Now that you know better, you can do better. <laughs> so yeah, please reach out to your relationship managers for any questions. And um, yeah, I think the only thing that remains to be said is um, happy selling. <laughs>